his character just like oh Jesus I said I wouldn't get killed oh my god oh my car what are you doing I pressure you it's all right I will give you time I'm gonna start it with the green one. Just match up the outfit. Okay. So here we are. In the middle of Los Santos. Um, so okay. Today. Like Alright, what are you saying? Don't interrupt me. See people just interrupt you on this game. And a phone call. Um, so yeah. This is my car. I'm in Los Santos. Outside my auto shop. But yeah, today, I'm going to do like a, it's a live stream, but like a podcast, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to be chatting about what's been going on in the year for me so far. Hello, this is Agatha. Yeah, before I get interrupted again. So yeah, the format today is like podcast slash live stream, where I just drive around and chat to you about my life and how things are going really yeah I mean things have been mad guys that's what I'm gonna say so far what? I don't even make any sense but yeah welcome back to the channel it's been a while guys I've been not too well to be honest in and out of hospital three times in the last week um, stomach related uh, illness that I'm getting over now just bit, got to change my diet up a bit be careful about what I eat and what's in it so new diet new year new me basically but yeah people always say the new year is like new you new everything but in a lot of ways it's not because you're still you but just a year older year wiser maybe been through some shit. We all have. Hello. Especially this year. Not to mention the year before. But that's how, how it is, really. You can't predict anything. You can't say, oh yeah, this year will be better than last year. It might. Uh, I hope so. But you can't guarantee that. Like, nothing is guaranteed in life. And, yeah, I went into the new year, I don't know, like trying not to hype it up too much because when 2021 started, everyone was like, oh yeah, COVID is over, it's done. We can go back to like normal life. We haven't, how many vaccines they make. There's always a new variant, and it's difficult to uh, not to keep a level head. All that's going on. I mean, some things just make me laugh these days. Like less and less surprises me about what you hear on the news every day. Um, and we've society's changed. We've become in some ways colder but personally I appreciate those close to me more the friends the family makes you value them more I think yeah being in lockdown stuck in the same house it's not fun it's not fun at all after a while you go mad with the same four people or however many people in your household it will drive people mad and it did and just every time we turn on the news it's just negative it doesn't help your state of mind um, but maybe you're like me you just try not to watch too much news keep up to date of course but don't like overdo it and try not to I think dwell on things and overthink things. I'm one of those guys that overthinks a lot. 
of simple shit that you don't really need to overthink. Um, I don't know if anyone's similar, but like simple stuff that doesn't need overthinking. I want to think. And it's not good because it keeps you up at night. And me to just switch off. It's impossible now. And if anything, this pandemic has caused me to get addicted to screens. My phone, which I wasn't before. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm a YouTuber. I have to be involved on social media a bit and have a presence on those platforms. TikTok as well. That is very addictive and dangerous. As a lot of you may know. It's just like, can't keep away. It's that dopamine hit you get from scrolling down or, or flicking to the next page or whatever it is like Instagram, Facebook, all these platforms. It's a flick or a swipe of some kind with your thumb that is addictive and you can just be there for hours and not even realise I'm probably guilty of it too but definitely I've uh, played a lot more video games in that time not that I didn't before but you have more time to kill and that kept me going because keep in touch with friends the ones that are gaming anyway that are playing other games with you and it's a good way to pass the time, socialise, forget all the shit that's going on. Like, in the last few months, I've been pretty ill at times. Like, I was in hospital in September. That was not fun. And I'll talk a bit about that because it, was, uh, it wasn't it was COVID, but it was a, cold, a bad cold. A lung-related illness that... For people like me, it's norm it's, I'm not going to say normal, but like, if I get cold, I get it bad because my lungs are pretty bad anyway. In terms of when I breathe in and out, I don't use the full capacity of the lung. So, if you get a bad cold, a chest, chesty cold, it can affect your breathing and to the point of when I ended up in hospital um passing out because of literally lack of of oxygen uh, i'm fine do not fear i'm not brain dead as a result but i tell you what though there's one nurse literally like i thought i woke up in heaven like she was gorgeous that's all i'm saying and i don't know if she was there before but I noticed her after I woke up. I was like, God, am I dreaming? <laughs> it's like, don't go into the light. I kid you not. When I passed out, it was the strangest thing I've ever been through in my life. Not, of course, not in a nice way. I wouldn't wish it on you. But a very strange thing. Like, I, I thought I saw a light. I thought I saw Jesus. No, nah, but seriously. I felt something. I don't know, like... Is it God? What is it? I don't know. I mean, I was raised Catholic, so... I'm forced to believe it probably is. But all the light I saw was the lights on the ceiling in the hospital where I was laying. But that was... a moment of... Uh, it kind of gave me a bit of... Um, like, clarity gave me clarity on life that made me appreciate it a lot more made me think okay covid is out there but what i just went through has made me value life even more regardless and i don't wish that on anyone and people were worried about me but something changed after that for better and for worse because then the new variant came and like I got even more worried because my immune system was so bad. Like, yeah, I said I didn't watch too much TV. But you hear about these things and the more people go on about it, the worse it is. This Omicron and all this. 
and like at the beginning of COVID yeah I was worried I think we all were and that's normal right fear of the unknown and then you slowly get used to it you realize okay this is what happens this is what I've got to do when I'm in a public place then bam lockdown bam lockdown people forget how to act human social anxieties all this forgetting how to interact people just turn into idiots and go mad over toilet paper like some of it was laughable at the beginning people were like oh it's a conspiracy they still are the anti-vaxxers I got the vaccine out of fear of dying from a, a virus called corona simple and spreading it to others like in my family like why would you willingly want to do that and now you say oh it's, it's they're forcing us well in some ways yeah in other ways without the vaccine you can't do anything so yeah it is kind of forced upon you but oh and then the third the third is in the booster I was, I was happy because I need that protection because I'm, I'm a vulnerable person in the government's eyes in terms of this virus and then if you're a normal person you think oh yeah I'll be fine if I get it well your neighbour might not be if you give it to them but it's a difficult one and I'm not going to attack anyone who chose not to have it but stay clear of me or at least be careful and follow the other rules if you're not going to have the vaccine you have to you should do if you're like nah I hate Boris forget what he says don't do it for Boris do it for someone like me do it for your grandma do it for your old age neighbour you know do it for someone else's someone else's grandparent you know because uh, yeah I mean you can get political and all that but you got to consider others and there's vaccines for all sorts of things that people have and have always had over the years now I don't get the big deal like do you want to live in a normal society I don't think we will ever again if Covid don't kill us the planet will set on fire or flood or do something so you know what 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 can we do like I I feel like anyone who's happy right now yeah they got okay they're happy but they might be living in denial just pretending Covid isn't there I, I did it for a year or two I'm probably still living in denial like a little bit like you think about Covid all the time you're gonna you're gonna freak out and just not be able to live so you can't always think about it and obsess over it because I mean you just do yourself more more harm than good this is one of my houses called in a different car return that one but yeah happy new year I know it's been I've been quiet this year so far I was ill this year as well been in and out of hospital three times my first outing this year was to a hospital I literally like had such bad stomach cramps and stomach related problems that it took me to A&E I went there at 7 p.m. Well, that was when we called the ambulance that kind of time. And we decided that it's better if we drove up there ourselves. So we took a family trip to the Royal Free. What you need, boss? Because we just thought I can bring them around. last time I was at a more local hospital in Barnet and wasn't too good. I'm not going to speak bad on that hospital, but... I'll bring it to you. So we chose okay. this one. I got stuff to do. Uh, the hospital I was born in, actually. The Royal Free, which is 
if you're in London, you know about it, you know where it is, or you know of it. Um, so yeah, went there and did not leave until 3am, once they figured out what was going on. Then it happened again on the Saturday, that was the Monday, as in 3rd of, 3rd of Jan. Then by the Saturday night, I went in again at about 10. Didn't leave till 5 a.m. for the same problem to happen. Because the same problem happened. I. Yeah, I was better after that. They kind of sorted me out. Went back yesterday. As in this Monday. Just gone. Went back for like. Check up and figure out what's the future plan and uh, of course I've got specialist uh, doctors in the, in the neurological place where I go for my condition but I couldn't be admitted there because they don't they weren't taking uh, patients just because that hospital is dealing a lot with COVID but I will be going there soon when they're a bit more free towards the end of this month to get a full checkup and figure out where I go from here because it's related to the condition that I have uh, anything involving muscles they all get weaker so yeah it doesn't help in any part of your body really my brain still works um, that is that intact? I don't know if it is. I mean, we'll see what this year brings. Don't think I can take any more variants. It's just annoying. Annoying when you hear about it, like, again and again, and just shut up. Like, let us live our lives. Oh, I'm going to get a bit of speed going now. <laughs> I mean, when are they bringing out the next GTA? I have no idea. But let me know in the comments how you want me to drive. Like a maniac or like a real person. Because I can do either. This car is pretty fast. <laughs> A game like this helps you to escape during a pandemic like I'm glad I've got some great friends that I stream with and I'm grateful for them Charlie Jack Shay thank you I appreciate you guys no I love you guys that's it like got me through this pandemic. I've said it before. I said it in my like end of year video. But this is my first video of this year. And I'm still saying it and if there's another lockdown, I'm saving the knowledge that those people are there for me. And they're probably saving the knowledge that I'm there for them too. And like I said, I value these things a lot more because you never know how long we got and you never know what the next year will bring and how often you'll be able to keep in touch with people in general yeah you got social media and whatsapp and zoom but still before this did that video call people that much in general no and I'm prepared for it I know I don't want another lockdown, nobody does. 
If it happens, it happens. I can't... Ch some of the rules are there. No, they they not make sense, some of the rules. But use your common sense and consider others. Just all I'm saying. Whether you hate Boris or not, who you, you follow in terms of politics, erase that from your thoughts and just consider others. Like, And I've always said it the last year or so. Just be nice. We don't know what people are going through. No, I mean, nowadays you're outdoors. If people see you smiling, they're like, this person's in denial. Or they're not well, or they're crazy because how can you be happy at all? But there's moments this year I've been very happy in my own life. I mean, yeah, the world is miserable, but my part of the world isn't always miserable. There's days when I'm like, yeah, fuck this. It's all bollocks. I, I want to just not exist for a day. And then you, the next day you, you appreciate what you didn't that day. Like, if you're awake at night, lying awake at night, like, moan, like moaning to yourself about all the shit in your daily life, think about what you do have. Think about that. The roof over your head. The food in your fridge. The people who love you and hold you dear. The people who value who you are, regardless of how you are on your worst day. And they love you anyway. Think of those things. Think of the fact you have central heating when people have gone without during COVID. I mean, some people have gone without heating, you know without proper food so much so that a footballer had to start giving helping kids get school meals and stuff because Boris wouldn't like we live in a day and age where we need a footballer to help because the government don't what kind of world is this and I mean, I just can't believe we live in a world where... Well, I can believe that, because Boris is Boris. You know? And... Yep, I don't, I don't much respect Boris, but I respect other human beings. And yeah, of course... Yeah, we moan about the vaccine. Tell people to get it because maybe you think I'm thinking selfishly, thinking, "Oh, I don't want to get ill," and don't help themselves, and they suffer, and nobody ever tells them, and it happens to a lot of people. Like I don't know, I, I've been thinking like it happens to a lot of men like in their life they never get told like they never a woman will get a bunch of flowers from an admirer or a husband or partner whoever a bloke never gets a bunch of flowers I'm not to send me flowers but I'm saying they never get the same affection or they never get told well done and that's difficult so why do you think some people or men in this case appear like cold or like emotion or like well, yeah, on both sides but I'm not gonna attack one gender yeah, but like why do people treat other people the way they do it's because maybe they've never been treated in a decent way and that's what you gotta think about like oh Jesus Oh. You're a boring shit. Oh, see that guy, like, he's just abused me now. Yeah, I crashed into him, but in real life I would have said sorry. No, that's completely random. But how you treat others would affect in the future how they act towards someone else. 
God, there's a huge helicopter in the sky. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's go this way. So yeah, guys. Picking up where I left off. I mean, I don't know what the future holds, but I don't want to say could it get worse. It can always get worse. It could be worse. Could it be better? Yes. Could it be worse? It could be. I mean, I appreciate what I have and sometimes I think we all forget that. We all forget like what really matters. And people were reminded of what matters in some way from COVID. Like it made you think about what what's really important, who's really important. And one thing I've learned this year is just, or over the years, not just this year, is people that don't give the way you give to them. If there's no give back, what's the point? Alleviate those people from your world completely get rid of them because they're no use to you and they're just using you and you might feel bad for getting rid of those people getting rid I say just say goodbye move on drop contact I've had to do it before um, and for a while it feels bad you feel like you're an idiot and you're exaggerating, but part of you thinks, okay, one less drama in my life. One less thing stressing me out. And when you're you're helping others and giving everything you want to give to them, if, you don't, if there's no give back, what's the point? I'm not saying you've got to expect people to, to like bend the knee for you and just that's a weird phrase. Just be like, you know, devoted to you, but that's not the point. I'm saying people that are just dead weight, that don't make you feel better at all, and just bring you down, like, drop them, get rid of them. Life has taught me that, not just this year, but as the company you keep. Just think of that, and put yourself first sometimes oh, oh well it's you know not it's not that bad not to worry and that the other person's not valuing you or you know no longer valuing you or giving you the time of day you deserve why blame yourself it's not you to blame and then people go oh in certain situations, they'd be like, oh, you've changed. But what made, what did you do to make me change? What did you do to cause this change in my mentality? It's got, it can't be, you know, just out of the blue I've changed and become a dickhead. No, that's not the case. I hear a lot of shooting. God. Why oh, is going fast? Jeez. No, just drop dead weight in your life. Get rid of those people. You know who they are. Uh, it could be in a relationship. It could be just a friend. An acquaintance. And don't don't feel bad either. You might feel for a bit, but I mean, I've you find new people that matter to you. It sounds a bit negative, a bit harsh, but it's reality. It like um, you know, telling someone how you really feel about them in, from a respect point of view, or be it relationship point of view you got you got to tell the truth I've learned that you got to be yourself 
I've learned that too. It took a long time to realise it. Because it's not obvious. Nothing is. And just when you got life figured out, it jumps out of the book and tries to murder you. Or cause a threat to your life in some way or change changes come you know and you know time passes things change new challenges arise and you, you you know you figure one thing out and something else pops up it's normal nothing you can do but our life yeah I mean, oh, oh dear, didn't mean to do that, and I would, you know, like, I'm still going to have a lot of lessons that I turn around and don't realise their lessons until after, on in hindsight, looking back, you'll then realise, okay, that happened for a reason. And in the moment that you're going through hell, you're walking through a swamp, and you're sinking in quicksand. You need something, huh? One of your rides? Yes, I do. Let I need know. a car. What do I need? It's got to be that. I'll get back to it then. Find him up again. Fine. But yeah, guys, in terms of me personally, I'm still recovering from the year in Call general. The clock. What you want? Some wheels? And apart from that, I'm overcoming how ill I've just been. Because through this whole stomach thing, I could not eat normally. Just couldn't, couldn't do it. So I've lost a bit of it's weight. Coming at you. Feeling a bit weak, feeling a bit tired from all these late nights spent in hospitals. But I'm here, guys. And what happened in September when I was in hospital for five days after passing out? Um, I appreciate, learned to appreciate, like, the value of your time. Because you won't realise how important time is until you're stuck in a hospital and you can't leave until you get better. And it's hard to face. It's hard to to deal with. But I got through that and learnt how, the importance of life. And this time being there, I was patient. I was in pain. I was calm, but I made it. Just knowing that I'd been through worse last time. And that will get me through the year. And through life. Not that I didn't have things that made me appreciate life more before that. Like when I was 16, I had back surgery. I was in hospital for two weeks. Because I had a bad reaction to the anaesthetic and it took six months to kind of, well, almost longer than that for my body to recover and adjust to having a rod of metal in your back. But I did and those two weeks I just wanted more than anything just to be a normal teenager. Like, to be out outdoors even and I valued it more and I was stronger for it because kids how many kids that age go through that I mean that's why going through trauma all early on I wouldn't say it's trauma but like something like that will, will make you grow up and there's kids that have adult responsibilities 
caring for family members and siblings, parents. And from a younger age, they're forced to be more adult than most of us. But this thing in 2010, when I was 16, is major surgery. It, I did a lot of growing up, staring at a hospital ceiling, rejecting hospital food, and just forcing my parents to bring me takeaway and bacon sandwiches. Oh, thank you. Did you hear that? so hard to drive like this. This car's slow as hell though. But you gotta be humble. Confidence is key to life and I lost a bit of confidence the last six months I would say. All this shit that's happened. I've been stronger for it, and I say that, but probably overall learning outweighs the difficulty in the long run. As long as I'm well, like I said, I've got to look after me. Consider others, but do look after yourself, because if you're not suffering with COVID, you're not going to give it to someone else, are you? If you are suffering with it, then that's different. I mean, I spoke to one of the nurses, one of them in the hospital, and they said quite a few that come in without, without the vaccine. When they have COVID, it's a bit worse. The ones with the vaccine don't suffer so much when they get COVID. Not to say that that goes for every time. Don't take what I say as fact. It's not. But. Yeah. I've been in the hospital all this time. And I've been very lucky. Because I've been in there for. Things that I've walked away from. Or wheeled away from. Or whatever. Just think I met. And the Italian Badger football team. I got to hang out with my best friends and family and cousins in Italy. I had my birthday over there. Um, hang out with my best friends even here. Some of my best friends from Italy came over to hang out here for a few months anyway. Um, you know, I had family over at the beginning of the year. Got some of my cousins living over here. Hang out with them every now and then. I haven't been out too much. I'm online with my friends, having banter and just crazy banter like every day. Or a good old chat one, some days. Or for different reasons, helping those people through something or them helping me. By being online for each other, it's kind of what we're doing. We're just, you know, even if you don't say it, being there for that person. It's just being there to have a stupid random conversation or a deep, serious conversation. Um, just get things off your chest. And yeah, I could do that with the podcast, but certain things you don't want to say online. Certain stuff I'm not going to talk about. Yeah, because privacy is a thing I believe in and people have to respect that. And in today's day and age, people don't really. People don't really respect it. And it's a shame. It's one of them things like, it's part of life. And we've all grown this year. But I'm saying there's been difficult times. And it's so many ups and downs. Can't really categorise this year. 2020 had a lot of downs too. But 2021 was supposed to be the year of hope because we got the vaccines. Didn't change nothing. But I had fun. 
I found a way because you just dwell in self-pity. It's not good. And like I said, the last few months, I just felt a bit weird, like, didn't even feel like going out when I had the chance. Then Omricon came, and I couldn't go out, so I was like, damn, that's not fair. And I had the urge to go out, and I couldn't. Because of this bloody virus that we cannot avoid. I mean, you can, if you have avoided it, like me, just know you're God's favourite, because you're very lucky. And we've all been very careful. Everyone in this house. More than the average people. Some people are a bit blasé, but we were like proper OTT at the beginning. I'll bring it by. Alright, we're approaching the final bit of the podcast. Well, it's a podcast, it's a stream. But I'll be putting this in my podcast. This is just a test, an experiment style video, and we'll see if I do any more of this style. Because... Change it up, you know? Not always the same type of videos. You know, not just me staring at a screen. Staring at a camera, I mean. And it's been different. I haven't been killed by any other GTA players yet, so. But some of you may not even been born yet when the movie with this car came out. Too Fast, Too Furious. It was the second one. R.I.P. Paul Walker. But, like, as good as the first one was, it made... it... it brought him along as an actor too. A top actor. And this car... I loved... I always loved this car. But after seeing that movie, it was like the dream car as a kid. Oh, jeez. It was the dream car. Every kid wanted this car. Every kid wanted to be Paul Walker. Well, some kids wanted to be Vin Diesel. Bald and whatnot. Oh, Jesus. But not all of us. Paul Walker like that. that. His character just like... Oh, Jesus. I said I wouldn't get killed. Oh, my God. Oh. My car, what are you doing? I'm left without a car. But gotta love Paul Walker and that era of movies in general, like the first Fast and Furious, like Wow. You calling for some wheels? Any movie with I'm a car in it. Literally any movie with a car in it. Way. I would watch back then. Oh my god. I forgot what I was going to say about Paul Walker. But they made too many other movies. They've made too many Fast and Furious movies. That's for sure. Again. It's going to keep killing me. What a twat. Like, you're born in 91. You're like. 31, what are you doing bombing me? Bastard. I need another vehicle. Got to finish the podcast in style, you know? Little convertible.
This is beautiful. This is why I forgot what I was going to say. Because this is a beautiful car. I'm going to run because that guy's going to kill me. To be prepared for anything this year. Not to say it won't get to you emotionally or mentally. Like it has to me at times. Only very recently. For what is it like? I felt like, what's the point of not going anywhere? Then again, I didn't want to go anywhere. Like, it, it's a bit of a social anxiety thing. I mean, a few like a few months back, I did a video when I'm driving around IKEA, and I was talking about how social anxiety isn't really that. I was like, I don't care because who cares? I'm in front of a camera talking about random shit in Ikea whizzing around in my wheelchair like I could give a toss what people think but at times it's difficult just don't know how to be in public I understand, I understand people have found that difficult before now because just don't, no one everything feels weird and not the same and different and yeah people love swear at me I love the sound of this car we'll take it on the motorway Take it through here, it's that nice. All lovely. All beautiful. Lovely. No. Oops. Thank you. Now life is strange. This year will be difficult. Won't be easier. Don't go. Oh. Well, I mean, happy new year, but is it really? We're in the same shit. It's how you perceive it that will shape your year. How other people perceive it is how they perceive it. But it's how you experience it and what you do to make it better in some cases. If it doesn't turn out good, don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself that 2021 was the way it was. If you found moments that made you appreciate life, good for you. I did too. If you didn't, I hope you do this year and if you don't I'll help you try and do that through some of these videos if you don't fall asleep to this kind of video that's why now I'm gonna speed into the sunset not crash and that was nice long live GTA till they bring out a new one I mean, look at that. Look at that. Well, that's ugly, but yeah. Life finds a way. And I think that's it, guys. Come to the end of my discussion. And I hope you can appreciate it um, and thank you and good night 
Oh, look at that. Oh.